about three myths that might absolutely thwart any of your weight loss efforts. So whatever you've tried in the past, if you've been stuck, or you've plateaued, or you've just given up, I feel your pain. I've been there. I understand. And all the research that I've done, these are the things that I've come to understand to help people in a very different way. So my motto is do something different. So I hope this is really helpful to you. So I want to talk about the myths of weight loss. And huh, a little dyslexic today. The number one myth of weight loss is you don't lose weight to get healthy. Everybody thinks that you have to lose weight to get healthy. You get healthy to lose weight. So what do I mean by that? Well, when we talk about losing weight, there's two things that we can break this down into. We can talk about burning fat. And when we talk about burning fat, we're just really talking about burning energy. Or we can talk about losing pounds. So, yeah, you want to burn fat because that's a really good energy source. But really, what you want at the end of the day, or you think you want, is losing pounds. Pounds of what? So when I first took physics, I thought one of the most interesting things, all these myths that we come to believe, these thoughts that we keep thinking are these belief structures, that a pound of feathers is the same as a pound of lead. It's a lot more feathers, right? So a pound of fat is the same as a pound of water, is the same as a pound of um, muscle or fat. You know, all those are a pound is pound is pound. So the problem is we get on the scales, and initially when you go on a diet or you restrict calories, all you do is really dehydrate the cells. And so what you're doing is you're losing some water weight. What you want to do is you want to shrink fat cells. So that's going to lead me to number two myth. So number one myth is you lose weight to get healthy. But no, the truth is you're going to get healthy to lose weight. That's the myth. That's the truth. And when you are healthy, when everything is balanced in the system, there's no reason for weight to gain around because, or weight to stay around because one of the only function of the adipose cells is to store stuff. Adipose cells are fat cells. It's to store stuff. So if you have no need to store extra stuff, that's a game changer. So you get healthy to lose weight. So number two myth is that you lose fat when you diet or you lose fat when you lose weight. You are born with all the fat cells basically that you're kind of going to have. The number, this is an adipose cell or a fat cell. And there is some new research that has shown that just like skin turnover, our bodies are completely different than they were even, you know, a year ago. You, all your cells in your body turn over. So you're making new fat cells, but you are not making more fat cells in response to your diet. You make more fat cells in regards to just the fat cells that die off. So you have the same number of fat cells once you hit puberty. Once growth hormone starts to really stop and decline, you don't really make new fat cells in, in the sense of, like, you get fat and you make a bunch of new fat cells. So you have the fat cells, which stores energy. So it either stores sugar or it stores hormones or it stores fatty acids, which are what we burn as fuel that we call fat. And so really what you do is you, when you lose weight, you're losing number one, usually water, because if you decrease the inflammation, I'm talking about hormones in just a minute, because the hormone thing. But number two, what happens is you start to use up the stores in this fat. Now the fat cells will swell in response to the need to store more. So that's when I talk about different body types. So if you're an insulin body type, you have problems with insulin, you're gonna have problems all over your body, you look like the Michelin man. If you have a thyroid issue, you're going to be kind of boxy. If you have an estrogen issue, you have the big hips. Cortisol is the big belly. So depending on where those fat cells are, depends on how they are going to swell in response to hormones, which has every, everything to do with inflammation and hormones. So I'm going to talk about that specifically. And number, uh, so number two is you actually lose fat cells. You don't. Fat is actually the fat that you burn as fuel. It's just a carbon, hydrogen, oxygen molecule that kind of serves to, to burn, basically, to give you energy. Kind of like kilojoules kilo, uh, 
It's just a, an energy source. So if you want to burn fatty acids or you want to burn the stuff that we call fat, not the fat cell, but you want to burn fatty acids, what you have to do is you have to train the body to burn fats. And how do you do that? Well, number one, you train the body to burn fat by decreasing carbs because it wants to burn carbs first because carbs are cheap fuel. So you just eat fat, basically, or fat and protein. So fat is the big thing. We used to think that if you eat fat, it would make you fat. But that's not true at all. And actually, we could add a third and a fourth myth here is that fat makes you fat. It does not. And it, in fact, what we found was when they published the low-fat guidelines almost 40 years ago, people actually gained weight because when you don't eat fat, when you eat sugar. And so what happens is sugar has a hormonal effect on insulin. So fat makes you fat is not true. So the truth is that sugar is what makes you fat. And number three myth, which I kind of did a 3A and a 3B, number three myth is that you just need to decrease your calories and increase your exercise. That is not true. Because yes, while you do burn energy when you exercise and while food does supply that energy source that gets stored in the fat cell, that is not true because hormones influence everything in the body. Remember I said hormones, hormones, hormones. So hormones are the key here. And I'm going to go just a little deeper into this for just a minute. If you kind of zoned out a little bit, please zone back in because this is a really important part. But one of the things here is that there are two different types of hormones when we talk about weight loss. There are hormones that are fat storing, and there are hormones that are fat shedding. You want the fat shedding, right? So what are the fat storing hormones? Well, the fat storing hormones are insulin, also known with blood sugar and diabetes, estrogen, and cortisol. So you want to minimize these three hormones, and you want to maximize your fat shredding hormones, like thyroid, and testosterone a little bit. Testosterone actually can convert to estrogen, so it can be a little bit of an issue. And growth hormone or insulin-like growth hormone, which we stop making a lot of our growth hormone, comes from pituitary gland when we're little, um, but we make a lot of insulin-like growth hormone, growth factor from um, uh, other parts of our body, like the liver, as we age. So one of the next things I want to say before I go into kind of my little hormone spiel is that your liver health is very, very important. So you have to have a healthy liver before you ever start losing weight. So if you're doing anything to make your liver a little more toxic, like alcohol, or you drink a lot of beer, or you know, you're know you really overweight, um, you can cause something called fatty liver. So a couple little things that you might want to consider, and I can do a whole talk just on liver detox, would be things like methylated vitamins are very important. So that would be like methyl B12 and methyl folate. And um, I'll do a whole talk on that. But getting, getting your liver very healthy is very, very important. So if you want to lose weight, you're going to have to give up some of the alcohol. Alcohol also has sugar content, but it's also affecting your body uh, ability to uh, regulate the hormones of fat burning basically. So we mentioned that you've got fat burning hormones and fat storing hormones. So everything that I do is in relationship to hormones. And I just want to kind of show you how I, how this practically plays out. So when we talk about fitness, you want to maximize what you do with fitness. So we want to minimize cortisol. So I don't recommend when you're trying to lose weight, now, if you're really fit and you're good, CrossFit's great, and you can go run those marathons and all that stuff, but when you are trying to lose weight, you want to do what we call high-intensity interval training, which is that high-intensity and then rest, high-intensity and rest, and I, I'm going to do a whole video just on that, but um, you can look up high-intensity interval training on the internet, and there's a whole bunch on there. So that's the fitness that you want to use when you want to lose weight. Nutrition. With nutrition... You want to do two things. You want to decrease cortisol. You want to decrease insulin. 
you want to increase all the fat burning hormones, right? So if you want to decrease cortisol, you have to remove foods that cause inflammation. I highly recommend that you get food sensitivity testing done because you don't want to eliminate anything that's not really triggering inflammation in your body. And we have a blood test that will identify that, the level of love that. Because I'm like, I don't want to give up something if I don't have to. So the seven most common foods that cause inflammation are sugar. And artificial sweeteners are not good, so don't be thinking that. I do a whole video on that. Um, sugar, soy, gluten, dairy, nuts. Although there are some good nuts that I like, like walnut that has some good omega-3s in it, but like peanuts, not good. Um, what did I do? Gluten, dairy, sugar, soy, nuts, tomatoes. Some people say all the nice shades, like potatoes and all that stuff, and you're probably thinking there's probably not much food left over. There's a ton of vegetables left over, a ton of meat, protein, beans. So these are all the foods that cause inflammation that you need to cut out if you want to lose weight because they're going to decrease cortisol because most people are sensitive to these. Again, we can do specific blood testing and see if you are, but if you want to just kind of try something and kind of see if you can remove, most people are sensitive or have inflammation um, to these foods. So these are the main ones. So that was five, six, seven. Um, so those are the things you want to cut out. And to decrease insulin, you have got to decrease your sugar content. Um, I have uh, a great show that my husband and I did last week called The Sugar Show. You'll want to watch that about all the hidden sugars that are in everything because people are like, well, I don't eat much sugar. It's in everything. So you really have to get really conscientious about cortisol and sugar. So okay, we talked about fitness, nutrition, then there's stress. So this can be emotional stress. I'm not even going to get into all of that. That can be food stress. That could be toxin stress on your liver. So you really want to focus on um, the stress vitamins like your Bs and your Cs and maybe even some adrenal support, that kind of thing. Sleep is huge. You have got to get at least eight hours of sleep a night as an adult. Um, and what that does is that decreases your cortisol. You know, when you don't sleep, how stressed you feel all day long? And then your insulin spikes just from the sleep deprivation. So sleep is very, very important. One of the problems that happens after menopause is that women start to lose progesterone, which affects sleep. So it's really important that you get your sleep. And if you need some progesterone, um, make sure you get tested and, and see if your body needs that. Very, very big. Um, so fitness, nutrition, stress, sleep. What did they leave off that? And then detox and supplementation, which is this piece here. So this is the comprehensive way to lose weight. And there is no other sustainable way to lose weight and keep it off. Now, you might do one of these things, and you might hit on this, or you might start going to the gym and doing certain things that might help. You might start cutting some calories, and you know, you'll just lose a little bit of water weight. But unless you do all this together, you will not have the sustainable health. Remember, myth number one is you lose weight to get healthy. You've got to get healthy to lose the weight. And I promise you that fat, those adipocyte, adipose cells, um, are you, you have all the cells that you're ever going to need, and they protect you, and they protect your organs. You don't want to lose those cells in, in great quantity. You want to keep those, but you want to keep them small and toned, <laughs> if you will, even your fat cells toned. So uh, I hope this is helpful. A lot of nerdy science in there, but the crux is that everything revolves around hormones. It's either fat burning or fat storing. You've got to maximize your fat burning. So have a great weekend. Have a blessed weekend. If you stayed at the video this long, please share it. Uh, everybody share it. Please, please, please show the love. Show me that these are helpful to you. Um, come see me. That's my day job. And we do testing and we can help you with um, identifying these issues and help maximize your efforts so that you're not spinning your wheels and trying all this crazy stuff that, um, that doesn't work. This is physiology. It always works. We can go back to physiology textbooks and, and, dissect all this and it always works because it's the human body it's the way it works so we're exposed to a lot of toxins a lot of gross uh, stuff out there and a lot of misinformation and myths so hopefully this cleared up some of that so please share please like um and uh let me know if there's a video that you'd like me to talk about something um for tomorrow i'm going to try to do these every day so stay tuned and um
That's exciting. Our show uh, is airing every week, and we're getting ready to go uh, national, so I'm really excited about that with the Naked Doctor show. So like our Naked Doctor Facebook page, and y'all have a very blessed weekend, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.